This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Dave. Let's get right into it, shall we? There's not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to a first focal plane 1 to 4 LPVO. It's as simple as you could really get, with the exception of having a very small reticle here at 1x. You'll also note that this thing does have some reflection coming back in at least this very specific sort of environment. Pew pew! As you can see, passing through that door frame with a light on it, a very bright surface, you do get some sort of flashback, but that's probably just from the coating on the lens. The reticle is very small here at 1x, however, at least in this dark environment, it gets bright enough that you could at least see it very easily without having it blossom. Unfortunately, this is just as bright as it gets, but for the vast majority of you out there, it will be fine. As far as using the throw lever, well, I never really extend it. Pew pew! It's perfectly fine as is without having that gigantic dongle be off to the side and getting caught on everything. It's completely unnecessary. Pew pew! Pew pew! Despite the fact I never used it, I'm still happy that it's there. And guess what? I could always shorten it down if I really wanted to. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Pew pew! I want to try my best to make this video sub 10 minutes. See if the algorithm likes it, number one, and number two, just to get the information to you as fast and as quickly and efficiently as possible. Here at 1x, we have a lot of things going on. A fairly small reticle, a lot of scope body, and well, that's about it for right now. I really don't understand why manufacturers, whenever they're making a first focal plane LPVO, you just have a floating little reticle in the middle. Why not have some big ass German posts at 3, 6, and 9 to help guide your eye to the center? I've actually been in communications with someone about this exact nitpick on a certain brand of optics. Anyway, here at 4X, the reticle gets large enough that it's very easy to pick up, but it's not a really impressive looking reticle. I understand why they have it shipped the way that they do, but finding the top of that little post is a little, you know, not, I wouldn't say confusing, but it's just not the most streamlined and sleek. It's just sort of a hodgepodge. Again, the illumination here, at least in the dark, looks good at maximum, and it doesn't have any sort of bleed or blossom to it, so that's at least pretty good. But how is it going to fare in a very bright sunny day environment like we have here? Well, if you've watched the unboxing, you'll know that it's at least mostly visible, but at 1x it is so hilariously small that you really gotta make sure you don't lose it. Yeah, it, believe it or not, it is easy to lose a small reticle like this if you're in some sort of, you know, complicated environment or if you're running and gunning, not just sitting on a bench shooting at a target in the stationary position. At 1x, we at least have a fairly flat image, very similar to what we saw with the Tango 4 from, from SIG. That's going back a while, but you can watch my review on that and see that it's a fairly similar performance, albeit the image on that SIG Tango 4 was excellent. Here at 1x, it's mostly okay. We have pretty good edge-to-edge -edge clarity, overall brightness and colors. It's not terrible, but the amount of scope body that you see is just, it's frustrating because it just takes up so much of your peripherals. At 4x, 30-ish yards, the image is perfectly adequate. The edges do get a little bit blurry, but at least the center is fairly sharp and the illumination is at least noticeable. Panning down in a way you can see that at 4x, because the slight blurring to the edge, we have a little bit of a fisheye effect going on, and it is noticeable to the eye. Even at 400 yards, the center of the image around the reticle is still pretty good, but the edges are, of course, still soft. The farther out you go, clearly the worse it gets. You can see the 800 yard power towers off in the distance, and it's not really uh, sensational. But what can you really expect for a $300 optic, in fact, sub $300 optic that offers this many features? I'm not saying that all these features are great, a lot of them don't make sense, but what can you expect a company to try to hit a certain price point with all these features? Something's got to give, and it's basically, you know, the heart and soul of the optic, which is the overall usability through it. A few hours pass and the clouds roll in as we see how well this optic handles light transmission in ambient light environments such as this. You can clearly see through the glass it's a little bit darker than what we see outside of the optic. Illumination again is just bright enough to really make it noticeable here. However, any brighter than that it wouldn't be usable here, but it would be nice to have it at least in the daytime environment. But again, 
beggars can't be choosers. Given this is a 1 to 4, it only has a 4x multiplier to the glass, and as you can see at 4x here, the image still looks really good. If this is a 1 to 6 or a 1 to 8 with cheaper quality glass, the image wouldn't look anywhere near as good or as bright. Just another reason why I really like 1 to 4s and lower magnified optics in general. They usually have less issues going on. The only reason why this optic in general has the sort of optical issues that it has is just because it's sub $300. That's not a lot of money for any sort of optic. Moving on to my home away from home, what else can we take away from this optic? Well, you can see clearly the berm in the back does have a little bit of shift. We saw that earlier with the power lines. It's not terrible by any means. There are optics that do it a little bit better, but there are some that do it significantly worse. And when it's bad, it's really bad. This handles itself fairly well. I only wish there was a lot less scope body to it, but regardless to all that, the reticle is still so small that, guess what? If you're using this, like I said earlier, in a dynamic environment, it's going to get lost. And the brightness isn't anywhere near bright enough to really be able to pull your eye to the center like a red dot would. When I was running this optic, I left this at no less than 2x at all given times because I just couldn't see the reticle. Bring it up to 2x, it brings it up to a, a little bit larger size, plus the extra magnification does help see the target and pick up the difference between the reticle and the target, which is nice. At 4x, it's a little bit challenging to work with simply because of all the distortion to the outer edge of the glass, plus again, just how much of the scope body you see, for me, it just doesn't work out well in my favor. One area where this optic absolutely excels is actually the 1x eye box. It's very forgiving and open. You can see I can get about a foot away from this thing and still be able to look through it. But the problem is, where the hell is the reticle? The illumination is on full. Can you really even see it? No, it just looks like you're looking through a 1x prism that doesn't have a reticle in it. And again, that's the main problem. The eye box is fantastic, but what good is it if you can't see the reticle? You can easily see the reticle here at 2x, and you can tell that we're at 2x for a couple of reasons. One, I know that from memory, but number two, look at that dongle straight up in the air at 12 o'clock. It's just, it's, it's like an antenna on an RC car. You can't miss the damn thing. The 2x is still okay as far as the eye box goes, but at 4x, it's, you know, just like any other optic at its maximum, it's gonna get pretty tight. But again, this being a one to four, the 4x isn't as bad as a 6x would be at 6x. So take it for what it's worth. But look at the size of that throw lever. I don't know what Bushnell was thinking when they when the, when they when the design team went to the engineers like, all right, this is what we want, and they go, okay, yeah, we'll do that. It just makes no sense. And you know what? That's exactly the best way to describe this thing. It makes no sense. First off, it's a one to four LPVO. That's first focal plane. That in and of itself, to me, doesn't make sense. They gave it a two and a half inch throw lever. That doesn't make any sense. They give you a very small reticle with no duplex or German post to help guide your eye to the center and make the illumination not daytime bright. That makes no sense. On the subject of the reticle, they give you a drop reticle, but they give you target turrets, both in the windage and the elevation, that are non-locking. That makes no sense. So much about this doesn't make any sense. And that's the problem. It makes no sense, and it's not really great in any one regard. So why bother with this? Why not invest your $300 on something else? If you wanted to stick with an LPVO that was first focal plane for around the same price and have a better overall experience, the primary arm is SLX and 1 to 6 first focal plane was honestly really good. The glass clarity from 1 to 6 was excellent. The illumination is a little bit brighter, so it helps, but the reticle is still very small at 1x. The overall feel, fit, and finish is a little bit lacking, but at least you're getting primary arms as great warranty, though I have yet to fully test that. If you're looking to spend around $300 on another LPVO and you don't care about it being first focal plane, go with the Tango MSR. You're getting an excellent LPVO with excellent glass, a good reticle, good illumination, and an excellent mount. Why the hell wouldn't you go that route? It's just a vastly superior LPVO to this in every single regard. And look at that, folks. Under 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. But the biggest thank you is to Dave for sending this in for review. I didn't really care for it, but it's great to still get my hands on this and to show the community exactly what they're getting when they're looking to purchase something. And as for all of you viewers out there, thank you very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time.
And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can help by using the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.